And I think if I had known this back when I started, I would have made a lot more money a lot sooner. Welcome, hello, my name is Blake. And if you're watching this video, it's because you are starting your own resale business or you're thinking about it and you don't want to make the mistakes that everyone makes that costs everyone a lot of money. I've been doing this for quite some time, so you can trust me when I say I have made a lot of mistakes, but don't worry, we're going to go through five big ones, how you can avoid them, and how they're going to make your business better. The first mistake that I believe when I was earlier in my career was you had to have free shipping, you had to have one day handling, you had to have all these things that made running a resale business kind of difficult. Well, you don't. I have two day handling, I have plus shipping on most of my listings, and I still sell a lot of things. Now, would I sell more if I had one day handling and free shipping? Yeah, I think so, but it's not necessary. It's not going to exclude you from making profits or making sales for that man. I think this is one of those things that a lot of people who are new or have had some recent success talk about because it's very easy to say, oh, like do these things, you'll get more sales. Uh, but it kind of ignores that there are tons, millions of listings that sell that don't have those two things. So just remember, you don't have to do what everyone else always says. If it matches your lifestyle or your business plans better, have two day handling, have four day handling. If you have good items, you're still going to see sales. The second thing pertains to when you should or shouldn't buy something to resell. Now, what I've been told, what I was told for a long, long time, and what I believed for a long, long time was that if there was no sold history, meaning you go to sort by sold, see, hey, any green listings, meaning someone bought and paid for it, if there's none of those, don't buy it. It's not going to sell. Now that's mostly true, but what I wish I had known earlier is if there's no competition, that's good too. So many times over the past few years, I've sold rare books, rare collectibles with no sold history, but demand. And the reason that I know this is because they sell in like two or three days. Now, unfortunately, it's hard to know ahead of time. You know, you just learn this by doing it over the years, what niches are valuable. So like old boating engineering stuff great sellers for me uh old books old math books not so much and so you begin to learn more about do niches have demand not necessarily do i only buy individual items that i can prove have demand the third thing is i wish someone had told me blake just buy shipping supplies just buy boxes, just buy bubble wrap, just buy craft paper, just buy all this stuff. Don't waste time going through your Amazon boxes looking for the exact right size. Don't drive around to dumpsters trying to find boxes big enough for golf clubs. Just buy them because if you want to scale your business up, you can't be wasting time driving around looking for free boxes. That's just not going to help you make more money. Now, if you have one thing that you want to sell, Okay, maybe it makes more sense. But if you want to have a resale business, then you're going to have to get used to buying supplies, buying things to resell that have enough margin on top of them to pay for the supplies, uh, and time in your week or your month, or at the end of the day even, go online and buy this stuff to purchase these supplies. And I'll link below some of the supplies that I use. <laughs> The fourth thing is I am a big advocate of this now, and to be honest, I never really didn't believe this, but I see so many people falling into this trap, and it really does stunt their growth as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, whatever you want to call it, and that's a bad listing is better than no listing at all. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I think that if you've seen my eBay store, and I'll, I'll link below to that too, you know that some of my listings, the pictures are not the best. And hey, you know what? They still sell sometimes. Too many people are paralyzed by the fear that they're not perfect, or the listing isn't perfect, or there's something wrong with it, or the words are wrong, or they're missing out on any kind of important detail, when really, the most important thing to do is list it. Take a picture of the item in your hand on your phone and just list it. Work on getting better as you make more money. Use the profit as a motivator, not this fear of being wrong or bad in some way.
And this one is so important that I have to ask you before I tell you this, please, if you are new here, subscribe, give it a big thumbs up, and comment below with what you wish you had known before you started your resale business. So this thing that really just, once you understand what you're doing, it's going to make making money so much easier. And that's do not become obsessed with getting your asking price. Don't hold out because you think, oh, I know it's worth more. When you run a resale business, you cannot become emotionally attached to any individual sale or inventory. Think of it this way. If I buy football cards and I can double my money, but it takes six months, or I can get a 25% ROI profit in three days, it only takes like two weeks before I'm making more money than I would if I held out for the ultimate price. Now, yeah, in the long run, you'll make more money if you hold out for the exact highest price you can get, but that assumes you're not going to get bored. You're not going to lose inventory that you're not going to, that you're going to live forever. Basically, uh, we're not going to live forever. Spoiler alert. It makes more sense to sell things fast, reinvest that profit in more of that fast selling item than try and be at the top of the heap, making the most money per transaction. I know that's easy to think about doing. And I think if I had known this back when I started, I would have made a lot more money a lot sooner. I know that like you don't want to be somebody who gets taken advantage of by a buyer and oh, I could have had four more dollars, but that is not what you're doing. It's not a competition between you and the buyer, between you and any other sellers. It is a journey that you are on as an individual and your goal is to make as much money as you can in the shortest amount of time possible. And nine times out of 10, that's not holding out, that's taking offers, that's sending out offers, that's being right in the middle of the pack price-wise, selling things over and over again, reinvesting that profit and finding a system that works for you. I hope this video was helpful. Certainly, I would have liked to watch this video 10 years ago when I started. Uh, more than that, actually. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this stuff, and I hope you do, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you later.